All right. Thank you for tuning back in to Swiss Link TV for episode 14. We're pretty excited to have a guest here today again, as always. And uh, we're talking to Chris Koenig. And Chris Koenig is quite the interesting character. He is a, a businessman, a artist, a, a videographer, a filmmaker, a serious Renaissance man as we know it. And, uh, well, we want to talk about your, your adventures and what you do. And it looks like we have some of your adventures sitting right here on the table. Brought a couple Wanted of samples, yeah. Tell us about what uh, the Golden Beaver Distillery is and how you're involved and all the, how it started and sure and everything else in between. All right. Well, uh, Golden Beaver Distillery is my post-filmmaking career project. Mm -hmm. uh, we started in about uh, 2019. And uh, we are now in our fourth year of production. Fourth year. And we, uh, we make award-winning spirits made from locally grown Calrose rice. Mm -hmm. So what you have here is a sample of our, our core products. On uh, the little square bottle right here is our Beaver Liquor Moonshine, mm -hmm. uh, awarded a platinum for taste and flavor in a national competition. Um, it is a 90 proof, um, you know, white dog. Uh, we distill it in two types of stills, uh, two types of pot stills. Um, it's super clean. It's uh, great to taste uh, all the way around. It's good in uh, mixed cocktails, and it's great on its own, on its own uh, chilled out of the freezer and uh, mm. drink it just nice and neat. This is a beautiful bottle for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it looks well, great. Much better than the jar. Yeah. We I can tell a, you that. We, we also won a packaging award uh, nice. for that bottle. So, And I just want to inject to the people that don't know Butte County, which is the county that we're in, that are tuning in from outside of Butte County. The reason, one of the reasons you're using rice is because we're in the rice capital, basically, right? We're in the uh, third largest uh, area in the U.S. to grow rice. Yeah. And we're the only area in uh, the U.S. that grows a very special rice called Cal Rose rice, mm -hmm. which is a mid-grain rice that's used 90% uh, goes out of the country for export, mm -hmm. uh, mainly to Asia for making sticky rice. Oh, okay. And it's, uh, there's actually, there was a black market for it in Korea at one point back wow. in the, the 80s. Wow. So, well, I definitely see rice fields, a lot of them, when I drive around here. There so. are. There are. So. When I first moved here, I was kind of shocked. I yeah. said, what? This is one of the driest places on earth I've ever been in. There's, there's all these rice fields. Well, well those valleys you know, would naturally be a wetland. You know? Yeah, yeah so that's right. The, well, that's why we're called golden beavers, basically, because the beavers used to manage the, the wetlands between the Sacramento River and the Feather River. Mm -hmm. um, and there used to be 3 million golden beaver up here. Whoa. And in uh, 1820, starting uh, about then, Jedediah Smith walked up through here, ended up in uh, Columbia, on the Columbia River at the uh, Hudson Bay Company's uh, uh, headquarters, having mm -hmm. dinner with the president of Hudson Bay Company and talked about all the beaver in California. Uh, at that mm. point, uh, Hudson Bay Company started to send brigades down here, mm. trapping brigades, trapping. Uh, to keep the U.S. out of the fur trade. And basically, they came through for 20 years every year with about 200 trappers. And uh, from the Oregon border down to Yosemite, taking out the, the beaver and wow. uh, the fox and, and all the other fur-bearing animals. So uh, mm. we give 1% of our gross back to beaver habitat restoration. And getting the beavers that are uh, down here in the valley back up into the foothills where they belong because they make a natural fire break. And, uh, sure, I didn't uh, think about that. Actually, our funding helped change the laws here in California. Before uh, we got involved, you could shoot a beaver, but you couldn't move a beaver in the state of California. Mm -hmm. uh, now beavers can be trapped and relocated, which is going to make a huge difference in uh, mm. re restoring uh habitat that has been lost over time. That's very cool. I, I love nothing more than a slap of a beaver tail uh, when I was fishing out on Sacramento River first thing in the mornings. <laughs> it's just so much fun to hear that. We knew what it was and then we'd see them sometimes pulling out a dead uh, salmon, you know, yeah. and then sometimes the otters would come and try to take that away from the beaver and they'd play this game and the beaver would slap his tail and the otters would I mean, what a great place we live in to, to oh, see yes. such things. So I'm really glad to know that there's some help with the beavers yeah. through a way of a tasty beverage. Yep, <laughs> yep. And then uh, 
The, the bottle in the middle is our um, uh, Baibei Soju. Baibei is the Japanese word for beaver. And uh, we make a traditional Asian uh, spirit. It's, mm -hmm. it, Koreans call it soju. The Japanese call it sochu. Mm -hmm. And um, it is uh, distilled like a whiskey. So we distill just like we would our regular whiskeys. And then we proof mm -hmm. it down to 24% alcohol. And um, it's uh, really easy to drink. It's, it's super tasty. It's great with uh, barbecue. It's great with, obviously, Korean barbecue, mm -hmm. sushi. Um, it's just a nice alternative midweek. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hit a, an 80, 90, or cast strength right. proof whiskey. Uh, but you want a little something to take the edge off the day. That's great for that. I had one at your tasting room. You made a, like a ginger... The green tea. Green tea. That's what it was. That was yeah. so good. Green tea, yeah. soju drink. Is that, Oof, I highly recommend it, folks. Is that anything at all like sake, or is it a totally different? No, so sake is a wine. Mm -hmm. um, so we 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 ferment it like you would a wine. So it's fermented similar to sake, uh, but then we distill it. Once you mm -hmm. distill it, it becomes a whiskey. Okay. okay. Uh, but it's very clean. Uh, it's a great spirit. It's a uh, one Sunset Magazine Asian Spirit of the Year in two thousand twenty-two. Nice. Uh, we won uh, Soju of the Year last year with uh, the John Barleycorn Spirit Awards, which is uh, a competition that's uh, judged by all the spirit writers in the country. Nice. And so uh, we're pretty stoked on that. Uh, we're currently trying to change the laws in California, believe this or not. In California, you can sell imported soju and sochu to beer and wine licensees, on-premise beer and wine oh, licensees. Okay. So there's like restaurants. Right. We're talking uh, Japanese restaurants, Korean mm -hmm. restaurants, any restaurant that has a beer and wine license, um, can can buy imported soju and sochu. They cannot buy ours. Come on. Because it's domestic. Interesting. And the law is specifically written for import. So we're right now, there's a bill going through. Uh, our, our local assembly member helped Good. get it in. And uh, we have about eight co-sponsors on it, senators and assembly members. And we're mm -hmm. going to try to... Try to correct this uh, restriction of trade yeah. that was, oh uh, was done through constitutional process, which doesn't make sense to me. No. You know, our laws should be protecting our local business <laughs> instead of the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So it's, uh, you know, it's uh, very frustrating that we have to do mm -hmm. this. So, so that's our soju. Then our Pacific Flyway rice whiskey. <clears throat> so... We may take our beaver liquor and we stick it into two types of barrels. One half of the uh, batch goes into uh, new American oak barrels, mm -hmm. and the other half goes into used bourbon barrels, like scotch would mm -hmm. go into a used bourbon barrel. We then uh, let it age for about two and a half years, and then we blend those barrels together, and that makes our uh, Pacific Flyway straight whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, great daily drinker, easy to drink, it's 90 proof. Um, and in addition to this, in addition to our, our beaver uh, uh, donations that we make, we give a donation to the California Waterfowl Association Veteran Hunt Program. Mm -hmm. It's the program that they get veterans yeah, out I've hunting. Seen that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a great program. duck hunting is very expensive. It's hard for mm -hmm. a lot of folks uh, to get into it because you got to know people to get into it. Right. And uh, this program introduces, this year, they introduced over 800 veterans to duck hunting. Yeah, I saw that uh, a write-up about that once, or, or that was actually a, a program, documentary-style thing mm -hmm. about it. It's a great program. Yeah. Uh, all the veterans highly appreciated it, and they had veterans from all ages yep. that were there, and it looked like a great program. You know, part of part of the activity of, of hunting is going out with your buddies, sitting in a blind yeah. and talking. There's a lot of dead time when you're waiting right. for birds to come through. And um, veterans are isolated. Uh, yeah. They don't have, you know, a lot of times they don't have someone to talk to about their PTSD mm -hmm. uh, and issues that they're dealing with. And the Veteran Hunt Program allows those veterans to get together and talk. Yeah. just And uh, it's sort of like the old VFW, you know. Yeah. They, they get a chance to, to get blow together. steam and, mm -hmm. and get some healing that needs to be, take place. Very important. Just to get together and start talking. Yeah. A lot of times veterans don't want to talk about anything if it's not another veteran that understands their problem. Correct. I've, I've come across that quite a few times. In the old days, after a lot of people came back from Vietnam, yep. it was, yeah, it was, but uh, yeah, it's great to know that, that your company uh, understands all that and helps with that. That's pretty exciting. And so, uh, folks, I tell you, if you haven't tried the Golden Beaver, um, 
I've been at their uh, tasting room, and that is on, let me get the address for your tasting it's room. It's 2420 Park Avenue here in Chicago. 2420 Park Avenue. And they also have music on Friday afternoons. It's a great place to go to hang and try some of these great drinks. See their beautiful copper, uh, what, what is that? That's a that, steel. That, that, what's the well, that's a, finishing you know, steel, or what do you call yeah, it? It's or? a Tennessee Thumper. Tennessee it's a, Thumper, that's it's what a, it was. Yeah, it's a hillbilly still from mm -hmm. uh, out at uh, back east in Appalachia. Yeah, and, uh, beautiful. It's, it's a it's an infusion still, so we do infusion. A lot of, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, we do a lot of yeah. infused moonshines with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very cool to see, and uh, and also you know come visit Chris and and talk shop if you're into into this. My uh, um, niece's husband down south. He's a a home distiller he's yep. moving towards you know more and more uh commercial doing more and he's building it up pretty big and well, that's what he was there. that's what happens yeah, yeah <laughs> once you start happens, in the garage, start the garage yeah. uh -huh. and he had some questions about that i couldn't answer so i'm gonna put the two of you together sure <laughs> he wants to talk and he has he has some shop questions yeah i'm not sure when's this <clears> gonna air <throat> when you're gonna put this on? uh this is gonna come out today okay so mm -hmm. uh we have a distiller uh a day as a distiller mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, it's limited to 10 people. Okay. And you uh, basically show up at the distillery at 8 a.m. And we're going to walk you through the whole process. You're going to mill. You're going to mash. Ah, cool. Uh, you're going to start a fermentation. Mm. Uh, you're going to participate in a strip. So that's the first distilling run. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do a finishing run. And then ah. at the end of the day, we're going to fill a barrel. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so you've got all the stages lined up. we got it all so lined up. Out. So nice. you know, people don't have to wait around for a week and a half for right. a finish and all that. So uh -huh. so uh -huh. it's, a, it's a good opportunity for someone who has an interest, like your brother, right. who wants to get into distilling. Yeah. Come hang out for a week or for a week, for a, a day. Yeah. And uh, oh, I should call Josh and see if he wants to come up for that. That'd be, that'd be yeah. great. And when is it happening? Uh, that is the 30th. 30th of March. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to him about that. I, I bet you he would love to come up. Yeah. So, Josh, you're watching this. Give me a call. <laughs> and you can <laughs> find it on Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Okay. To buy tickets. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So. Yeah. Is that the sounds, first time you've done something like that? The first time we've done it. Uh, we had a lot of, we've had a lot of requests. Uh, we, we focus a lot on and production for mass distribution right now so mm -hmm. we moved our tours out of the main distillery okay um, and we focus just on the, the event and the experience at the tasting room mm -hmm. um, and so we decided we we'll try this and see how it goes and you know it gives people an opportunity to come in and do hands-on um, also keeps those folks that you know don't want to uh, try you know home distilling which is still mm -hmm. illegal in this country right uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, this is one way to find out if you want to be a distiller. All right. Very That's cool. pretty exciting. And uh, folks, you know, always, always buy local, especially when it's as good as this. Why would you want to buy anything like this from anybody else? That's the way I feel. I mean, it's so. ridiculous. It makes no sense. You know, if lo you have somebody local that makes this good of a product. It's not even a question. Where can they buy it? It's a question. Uh, we're at most of the liquor stores around town and okay. most of the restaurants. Uh, we're also at Costco. Okay. And uh, so Costco up in Redding. Uh, Costco, Redding, uh, Chico. Chico, Redding, Marysville, Roseville, oh, Marysville. Woodland. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so you, we have our, our most popular spirits not here on the table is our mm -hmm. Honey Run. Oh, yeah. We take mm -hmm. a three-year-old uh, bourbon and we mm -hmm. back sweeten it with honey. Mm -hmm. Local uh, OHB honey out of, out of Local Boulder. honey, folks, if anything ails you, that's the drink to yeah. drink. And... Um, so that's that's our by as far as skews, you know, as far as best selling skew, that's our that's the one. Ah, okay, and that's so, great. Costco is a good place to find it. And if they do you have a website they can look it up? Uh, you can. You can order online from uh, goldenbeaverdistillery.com. We have goldenbeaverdistillery.com. Yeah, and we have both in state shipping and we have out of state shipping. Oh, very so good. if you live outside of California, you can order through a, a mm. retailer that's actually out in Washington, D.C. that has the right to ship to 47 states. Very good. Yeah. Well, that's pretty exciting. We're so glad that you came to talk about that. Yeah, and it's always good for, you know, I, I'm always shocked. I mean, I've known the, the Koenig family for quite a while, but I'm always shocked when I find out about different businesses around the area. Really? And how long have you been here? You know, that kind of thing. And uh, I'm always excited to shop local if I can. So this is your chance. You enjoy a good drink once in a while. Um, local. Goldenbeaverdistillery.com. Yeah,
And uh, we were going to tell you today, uh, Chris, about an interesting parka. Yeah. This is kind of an interesting item here. This yes, is, of uh, course, you know, we sell a lot of military surplus, and right. Miles is going to tell us about Oops. this particular one. Yeah, this, this parka, and I'll sort of, uh, we'll overlay some pictures of this and stuff for the audience. I'll hand it to you. This is a Czech military parka from the 1960s. Very cool. And late in World War II, when they came up with, uh, you know, infrared night vision, anybody that had night vision had a, you know, a massive advantage on. Sure. Anybody camouflage might just show up as a bright white beacon in the night, you know, through the night vision. Um, so in the 60s, the Czech military started to experiment with IR uh, reflective dyes to make different camouflage patterns that would actually appear uh, under night vision, which now is pretty standard. You know, most camouflage right. will be IR treated. But this this is actually the first, first one that ever did it. And you can sort of see on the backside what the camouflage looks like under infrared. That's the IR dye sort of coming through on the other side. Right. So by day, it's this really unique strict tarn. They call it the rain pattern, raindrop camo. Uh, but under infrared, it's a totally different design, which is pretty interesting. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very interesting fact about this strict tarn from the Czech Republic. I didn't even know. They researched it and found this out. Uh, the first IR protected... Uh, Garment. Now, a lot of the American uniforms, you can't even find them anymore because they destroy them because the IR protected. They don't want these, you know, when there was yeah. a big drug problem, there are people drawing and they're in the forest, you know, and they're trying to hide. They were, they were wearing the U.S. IR protected heat um, signature protected clothing. And so they just decide, okay, we're just going to destroy it. So you can't even get the, the current uniforms from the U.S. military anymore. It all gets destroyed because of the IR protected. And uh, here we had something from the 60s and 50s uh, that had the, had this all licked before we, before anybody ever thought about it, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, and it's a, it's a nice long coat, and then it has this pocket in the back. This is kind of a morbid pocket. Um, you know, if you don't know why there's a pocket in the middle of the back that you can't reach, it's because it was sadly designed for that, you know, there was a, that soldier got charged, Got right. hit, fell on his face. It's full of ammo for the guy behind him. He would take the ammo from him and then keep fighting. Keep fighting, and that's how. That's what that pocket's for. It's a sad pocket to think about what it was made for. But uh, luckily, you know, these people never went to war. It's all Cold War stuff, and it's just now a good pocket to hide your sandwich in. Very cool. <laughs> and uh, if you fall over from hunger, your guy will <laughs> behind you will take your sandwich. <laughs> Some grilled cheese. You or you can put your duck in there. You know, once yeah. you shoot the duck. Or your file, you could just stuff it back there. So go, go dancing and put your wallet in your back pocket. Yep, <laughs> that's right. And it's always great quality when you buy something that's military. And where can you find it, Miles? Swisslink.com. Swisslink.com. Very cool. Yeah, another local item. We have a warehouse full of things that we brought in. We're a recycler, basically. We uh, repurpose things. We stuff that would have ended up in some pile and some European trash can, you know. After they get rid of it and everything, no, nope, we pick it up, we bring it here, we sort through it because it's all awesome stuff. And you can buy it for, you know, pennies on the dollar here at Swistling.com. And it's also got a serious cool factor. I think this IR treatment story is awesome. Yeah, it's I'm cool. so glad that you guys found that. It's a little um, chic too. Yeah, I mean, you can wear mm -hmm. that to clubbing. Yeah, it is pretty chic because of the length, the way it's designed. Yeah, this, kind this of particular a, pattern, you know, it's camouflage, but it's not. You know, it's not overtly. Uh, it looks more trendy. Camo, it's yeah, yeah. military. Mm -hmm. It has a nice look to it for sure. Yeah. Uh, unless somebody's looking at it with night vision, then it's a totally different camo. It's pattern. different, and That's it's still camo. <laughs> yeah. So you, speaking about filming and IRC, so you did some films. Tell us a little bit about where we can find your films and what you filmed. Yeah. So uh, for about twenty-five years, I did um, documentaries for primetime broadcast on PBS, mm -hmm. as well as some theatrical releases. So uh, mainly science programming. Mm -hmm. So 400 years of the telescope. That's uh, which right. Which is a yeah. PBS science special narrated mm -hmm. by Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, it's up on um, Amazon. and You can find it on a bunch of other platforms. Okay. Um, and then we did uh, the last film was Sight, the Story of Vision. 
Mm -hmm. uh, with Sir Elton John, and that was uh, dealing with obviously vision. Um, you kind of look at mm -hmm. all the things about vision around the world and all the vision crises that are going on, uh, mm -hmm. cataracts and glaucoma and retinitis, pigmentosa, and other conditions that affect humans. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a lot of people don't know about vision until it's too late. Right. And so it gives them a it's a it's a good introduction to that. Uh, pretty entertaining. Hmm. We filmed on five continents, wow. uh, so it's a it's a good film. And then we did another film with uh, Ice T mm. called "Assaulted Civil Rights Under Fire," which mm -hmm. looks at the Second Amendment in American history mm -hmm. and the role of uh, the right to bear arms. Mm -hmm. um, Did you just say with Ice T? With Ice T. And the other one was with Sir Elton John. And the other one was with Sir Elton John. Man, yeah. you dipped into the music world there pretty heavily too with these people. Yeah. Great yeah. audience reachers. That's what I would we're say. trying to do is get the yeah. message out. So that's uh, awesome. And all those are available on, on uh, Amazon. Great. Yeah. You've yeah. lead an interesting life there, Mr. Koenig. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Well, you know, gotta gotta keep doing hip shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. The other day I saw him with his sidecar bicycle and his dog. That was yes. very interesting. He yes. rides a, a electric bicycle. With a, a sidecar and your dog rides with you. Does he yes. have goggles? And he has yes, goggles. the dog he has does. goggles. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's too cool. Yeah, I can't find a helmet to fit his head. He's, oh. got, he's got a big head. So and, uh, we got some helmets down here. Might be a little happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty but, awesome. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, we we live in a great town where you can yeah. commute by bike, and mm -hmm. you know, as soon as this weather breaks, we'll be out. Yeah, back right out. back again. Yeah. Well, we're really glad that you tuned in today to Swiss Link. Live TV, not well, live you'll have it this afternoon. Uh, episode number used to be live, used to be live. We used to do this live with just Facebook, but now that we have all the fancy, fancier ways to show this a little bit better, we can just upload it to all these different platforms. So that's great. And then I'll, I heard Facebook breaks down once in a while, did it yeah, yesterday or something? Did. So, um, the whole world was in a panic. Whole, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My gosh, you know, and I didn't even notice it. It's, it's hard, about, some people never noticed it. Um, so we're so excited to have had uh, Chris here. Thank you so much for for being for here. Us. And then uh, next Wednesday we have Al Ranoff, uh, the general manager of the Whitmire Ford, Chevy, and Honda Auto Center. So tune in for that and hear the newest about how cars are selling and what you have to do these days to sell a car as a, in a traditional dealership. There's been a lot of changes, a lot going on there. That'll be interesting to find out. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Thank you.